<clears throat> hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Peasant chat on prime time. That's right. I promised you guys that I would do a couple of peasant chats at eight o'clock at night for those people that complain that they can never catch them when they're live in the morning. A lot of you don't want to get up at 9 30 a.m. on Sunday morning. And honestly, I don't want to. Like, I started getting to that point where I'm like, I'd rather do this shit at night because it's Sunday at night. I don't do shit. I just kind of come home and just, you know, relax. I kind of, sometimes I catch up on work if, if the tickets are too crazy. So I'm like, all right, let me do some peasant chat stuff today. So a lot of you that are subscribers to the channel saw today that I um, enabled one of the videos where I finally got my 2013 Mustang delivered. I got it delivered on Friday. Already got two videos up on it. I posted a video uh, a couple of hours ago, Patreon members saw it yesterday. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, you saw it yesterday. And today I made it live for everybody else. And I'll do something similar to the uh, channel members just so that they don't feel left out. So we're going to talk about what to do. Wh what are the first things to do on Mustangs? So if you're going to get into Coyote Mustangs, 11 through current, what are the first things you need to do as a catch can? And we'll talk about that because what I've started to notice is I've never really owned a used stock vehicle the 2019 mustang i had was brand new so i couldn't really give you the the video to 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 kind of showcase the stock stuff so we'll talk about the must do's and the catch can to me is so important in the ticket system there have been a couple of guys that have blown up their number eight cylinder ringland and they've had a specific catch can in their car a sealed unit and depending on how you plumb it it might actually be pulling a vacuum and uh, causing other issues so we'll talk about the catch cans that I recommend. We'll talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll talk about uh, future builds. We'll talk about VMP again, going out there and using the dude in blue, saying the dumbest shit like 93 octane, 800 horsepower. Again, places like that are just going to dig their own grave. We'll get to all that and more. And all your questions from the peasant poor people, not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly does it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live! <laughs> I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! <laughs> I love it. I don't know why I love listening to Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. P Mask! Nick, I got P Mask! That's right, we got Mr. Nick James is gonna get me a P Mask holder ending for the 13 Mustang. We're gonna do a complete build series, NA stuff, but nothing crazy because I'm not stupid, and then move on to Boost soon and later. Dina have Performance, Dina Performance.com, Dina have Performance. On Instagram, Dina Happy Performance. We're going to start releasing some cups for the YBC Amory. Check them out pretty soon. Park Farm. Hey, Park Farm, do you have a Gen 2 2.3 Roush Supercharger laying around? Let a brother know so it can get bought and put on the Mustang. Probably late in the summer, early fall, so we can get the car in the 9 this year. Two Auto Solutions. Why is that on? Two Auto Solutions down in Puerto Rico. The best late model shop, period. This is Tip. Calum Transmission. Calum Transmission.com. The Corvette transmission seems to be a little more involved, so we'll talk about that. Bellac, again, I installed Bellac wheels on the notch. Oh my god. 50 by 10, 6 and a half in back spacing, 5 on 4 and a half full pattern. Badass shit, I'm looking like a drug dealer. And MFP, MFP of Australia. Oh my god, I am out of breath. I don't know how I did that. Uh, I'm about to pass out. But luckily, I had some coffee before the show, so we'll get to your questions, comments, and concerns about everything that's been going on, coyote related. Uh, some of you that saw the video, if you have any questions about the video, some of you doubted that it's a, a, a Brembo package car. Like six R80 uh, cars didn't come with Brembo wheels and brakes. They did if you optioned for them, but they did not come in the track pack variant. Andy Ali, 2000 MCR, Travis, I'm Hong So Low, Mendoza Coyote, Clean DGT, Leon Phelps, Money 540, Slow 99, Dan Gilligan, B. Lavesh, Slow 99, Joe Jackson, and Paul Bonthieu said hello. Deuce did it. Dixon225, Joe Swish, Adonis, RoboStyle, Ken Phillips, Corned Fed Cow, Whipple Cripple, Richard Weed, TJ Sikorsky, Abel, S550, Red Fox, Bryson Whip, Magyar Low, Hatch 450X, Coyote Kelly, TJZ, Fox Body, ATX Cobra, Let's Go, Brandon, David, Freedom Rider, Stewart, Mini by Madman, El Patron de Cerveza, Mini by Madman, Ricky, Red Fox, Convert Cow, EPA's in the house, Josh Roy, ATX Cobra, SK Productions, Red Fox again, Ignacio Ramirez, DJ, Glass Roof Coyote, ATX Cobra, Naldo, Timo, J. Bruce, Phil Fez, JD Bruce, Holly Taquache Mode, Hatch 450X, Yogan Late says, well, being, uh, he's talking about maxing out his, uh, his Paxton. Daniel Vaca says, Culos. <laughs> He just says coolos. Brandon Horton, Sonic Blue, your average ZR1, Freedom Rider, Bender, Greg Williams, um, Enriguat. Wow. Clip Club, Dean and Half Performance retracted his message. Mustangs, Peter Child, Diego Flores, Dean and Half Performance, Venom Racing, Jacob Naldo, 
K2AZ, anyway, all the usual suspects are here. So, welcome everyone. So, first of all, a lot of you that watched the video on the uh, 2013 GT, thank you very much for being supportive. For the people that on on the Patreon, if it wasn't for the Patreon uh, stuff, I wouldn't be able to buy this car. I mean, I would, but I'd be super tight, and I just don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be super loose like Meek Mill. <laughs> Guys, have you heard about the guys? I absolutely love that stuff that's happening. I thought I had to hear, but apparently I don't. But I thought I had a clip of him, of him being called Daddy by Puff Daddy. It was good stuff. So the Mustang showed up. It smells a little musty. It looks like it's sat a little bit. So I'm going to get Palm Beach detailing, Joey Carl, Palm Beach detailing. Going to get the engine bay cleaned up. The, the next video of that is going to be on Monday. It's going to drop around 5 p.m. And it's basically me checking the plugs. And showing you why you need a catch can. So we'll talk really quick about why you need a catch can. So this uh, gentleman emailed me. What is his name? Uh, Tony. Tony from Patreon emailed me after I showed him some of the catch can videos. I made a catch can video live on Patreon. So this is basically what your catch can looks like if you neglect it. Or not neglect it. Let's say about 3,000 miles. It's hot, cold, hot, cold. And you're running E85. Remember, the uh, crankcase, uh, positive crankcase ventilation system is designed for, as an emissions item. So it's sucking uh, basically uh, the, the exhaust from the crankcase, okay, which has oil in it. So the vapors and, and all of the subsequent fuel, especially ethanol, can make its way back into the intake manifold. But running a cash can in my opinion is best and running this style of cash can is best an open breather cash can now why do i say that i'm not a fan of boosted applications by the way this car has a uh, ess supercharger on it so anytime you have boosted in my opinion you should not be recirculating and again i say this in my opinion because i i know people like cash can manufacturers are going to say i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about but i had a cash can in my 19 gt and i popped the number nine number eight cylinder ringland at only 720 or so rear wheel horsepower. And I thought, that's rare. That's weird. So what I suspect happened is the sealed catch can was not evacuating the crankcase pressure. All it was doing, it was a closed loop. So let's say the crankcase is pressurized. The catch can being sealed then recirculates it but in the line captures the oil so the catch can it's doing its job of capturing the oil but it is not doing a good job of relieving the crankcase pressure you know so relieving the crankcase pressure in my opinion is way more important than capturing the oil i, I know some of you're going to say it's equally as important but just bear with me there's a reason billy badass uh fast cars have this little choo-choo train effect when they're at the line and they're launching their car. So if you look at like a Pro 275 car or something like that, if, if you look closely, right here, you see this right here way in the back of it? So it's kind of tough because the uh, this is uh, the, the racing vid uh, video, shout out to them. This car's a 360 car. So this car has, this is the catch can. This is literally the catch can. So what they do is they plumb the crankcase pressure all the way to the back of the car because in the event that it just pukes its guts out it doesn't end up on your tires it doesn't end up in the engine bay it pukes its guts out in the trunk so think about it think of it as a catch can so that is relieving the pressure in the crank case so i tell people if you're going to go racing you and you're going to boost your car I think it's more important to relieve the crankcase pressure in uh, boosted applications than to separate the oil. Let's watch this run because this thing's badass. Yeah, 360. What the fuck? Like a Pro 275 car going 360. That's like Pro Mod. Like Stevie Fast went 350 something. So that's like super, super legit. So a lot of you that get the sealed catch cans, you need to understand... NA, it's not going to hurt you, but I don't think it's going to help you. I think relieving the pressure in the crankcase is way more important just to make sure. Now, the problem with that is this. If you have a remotely mounted catch can in the engine bay, you will smell fumes. Again, the catch can and the PCV system is capturing exhaust. That's why there is no such thing as a emissions legal catch can, right? The moment you remove the exhaust from the equation, 
theoretically, technically, there is no CARB EO certified catch can that can capture the exhaust and, and trap the oil and still be deemed emissions legal because it's not going the exhaust, it's pre-cat. It's crank up into the valve cover, into the catch can, and potentially back into the intake. And it's just not an emissions thing. There is no such thing as an emissions uh, legal catch can. So I'd rather ventilate everything. So in my uh, 13 Mustang, what I'm going to do, even in A, I'll remotely mount catch cans, but it'll be at the rear of the car. I don't mind plumbing it under the car and then having a catch can maybe in the wheel well at the back so it's outside so that I don't smell the fumes. And I understand it sounds severe. It sounds like too much work. But when it comes time for boost, it would already be all set. Meaning all I have to do is plug in the two fittings at the cam cover and I will now have ventilated uh, crankcase pressure going to the back of the car so I don't smell it. And if anything was to happen and it pukes its guts out, it does it back there. So so someone says, call it the correct name. It's blow by. James, no. I'm not going to call it the correct name. I'm not going to be here to do it the way you want to do it. If you want to do it and do it on your own fucking show, do it on your own fucking show. But let's just call it crankcase pressure. Because everyone, the moment you say blow by, these idiots will absolutely go on Facebook and start talking about blow by. And blow by, let's be honest, is probably a, a term used when you have improper ring gaps as opposed to crankcase pressure. Because blow by makes it seem like there's an issue in the combustion event. I love you, James Williams. I'm not going to call it whatever the fuck you want me to call it. I'll call it whatever I want to call it. You want to do a live where three people watch your shit and you call it blow by? You're good to go. That's why I always thought blow by racing, the name blow by racing is not positive. Like I know they're in Florida, whatever. I don't even know if they're in business, but when you hear the name blow by racing, that's not positive, right? It's like saying burned clutch racing. It's like saying, um, <laughs> Slipping trans performance, you know, blow by racing. It just, it just sounds ridiculous in my opinion. So the moment, imagine you say, hey, I'm going to get my car built. Where? Blow by racing. Why would you take it there? Why don't you just take it to, um, you know, number, a piston broken motorsports. <laughs> it's just not something, in my opinion, that is a positive uh, name. Unless they mean like, I'm going to blow by you, but that's not what anyone thinks. No one thinks I'm going to blow by you when they think blow by racing. They think blow by racing, there's an issue. <laughs> so typically we don't say blow by, we say crankcase pressurization. Because let's be honest, the Grey Goose has a Billy Badass catch can in the back. So we don't say, oh, that's to capture blow by. People are going to go, what? Oh, that's to capture blow by. Or it's to relieve the crankcase pressure. That's, in my opinion, the proper term. So if you do have a Coyote Mustang or you're thinking of getting into Coyote Mustangs, 11 through current, I think one of the first mods you should do is absolutely ventilate the crankcase pressure and potentially get the oil away from the intake manifold so that your combustion is cleaner, you don't have oil interrupting the octane level in your um, in your fuel, and then if it's boosted, it'll relieve all the pressure and potentially not exacerbate the problem of having basically a closed loop system where the crankcase never gets relieved. It's just a constant feeding of pressure when the catch can is sealed as opposed to just letting it breathe. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about many other things. Now, the dude in blue released a video uh, recently talking about, oh, my girlfriend left me. Oh, by the way, <laughs> VMP went nine seconds. And I went, Whipple did. And he said it made 810 horsepower on 93 octane. And I went, oh, dude. So again, I can't wait for these things to go out in the wild. Put it on your car. 93 marathon fuel. Go on a dyno. And when your car makes 720 to 730, then you take it to the track on a non-400 DA day and it runs 1050, 1060, you will be disappointed. It's not a matter of if. You will be disappointed because the reason you're buying this stuff is to go, I want to go nines, right? Remember when VMP promoted 
a nine second S550 red, my red car. Gene Gray, rest in peace, Gene Gray, dead dad in the trunk and all. <laughs> only people, only the OGs know what the fuck I'm talking about. They said with a boosted pump, an 85 millimeter pulley, and E85, guys. That's right. E85, a boosted pump, and a Gen 2R with an 85 millimeter pulley. They promoted it as a nine second car. So when I was working there, people were like, you know what I want to do? I want to do what you guys did. I want to install a booster pump in my 15 Mustang with a VMP Gen 2R, 1,000cc injectors, and run nines just like you guys did. And I'm going, where, where the fuck did we do that? And then I go on YouTube and I go, holy shit, really? We said that we went nines with a booster pump? ID 1000s, E85, and an 85 millimeter pulley? And if we did, did we hurt the motor in the process? And then the car was sitting in the back of the shop until somebody bought it? Interesting, interesting, interesting. So again, you need to understand why I'm doing this. I might look like the bad guy. I might look like the guy that is just being a hater fine. I don't care if you think I'm just being a hater. But what I'm doing or attempting to do is to educate the masses as much as possible so that you can not set yourself up for failure. Many people would call while I worked there wanting me to do ID 1000s E85 on an S550 to run nines. And I said, sir, that is not possible. You will run out of fuel system. You will have issues. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And then when I tried to sell them into a $2,500 fuel system, they would kick and scream and say, you advertised it this way, so why don't you make it work? And I was like, he's not wrong. He's 100% not wrong. Now, somebody is saying, oh, hey, check this out. Um, you can do it on pump gas. Guys, guys, come on. The Gen 6 Whipple is just more boost. It's not like it makes... It's not like it makes, say, 50 more horse at the same boost level than it did with the Gen 5. It's probably just pumping out a little more boost slightly more efficiently. So it's probably 11 or 12 PSI. 11 or 12 PSI with a, let's just say, better intercooling and a better rotor design. 93 octane is 93 octane is 93 octane. I'm going to show you in a data log with my my, my uh, Gen 1 car that it is going to knock on pump gas. I can almost guarantee Florida pump gas will knock. So then you have to, then, then that begs the question, on a stock tune, on pump gas, this thing knocks. So how is this car going 9.9 .9 in the quarter mile with a Whipple supercharger? Octane booster. Like, octane booster. It, it's... That's why Octane Booster is not even mentioned because then it becomes a gotcha thing. Well, it's Octane Booster. Why don't you just say you did it on C16 or Tsunoko 260 or Q16? Why don't you say that? Because then people won't buy it. People will say, you know what? I don't think I want to run around with Octane Booster on my tank and my plug's looking all brown and shit after 5,000 miles. I'd rather just be on pump gas, 10 PSI, 650 to 700 robo horsepower, and vaya con Dios. So... That's my issue with the way things are marketed in the Mustang market. You able to talk about SEMA car and the bear yet? No. See, EPA, I don't think I'll be able to talk about that uh, probably in a very honest way because then it's going to seem like I'm just piling on VMP. Like VMP, you know, whatever, let them do their thing. I, I don't dislike them, but I also don't like them. You know, I'm just neutral. Again, I work for Lund, so I don't, I don't care either way. So I won't, you know, go out of my way to promote their products because what I'll do is I'll highlight what they're saying and and give you guys a, I don't know, reality-based situation. But if I was to tell you that the SEMA, Track Attack Car, Bear, and the Focus, the problem. So that's not for anyone's, that's not for public consumption, but man... I could, if I see you at 2K, if I see you at what I'll tell you that story, but not not on air. Fuck all that. 
Uh, there needs to be more reality checking. With the parts companies claim nowadays, that unfortunately doesn't happen because the majority don't know any better. And that happens with everything. Suspension. Um, tire. Uh, 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 sensors. Like, have you seen that TBM brakes seems to be on every car? Is it because it's the, it's the best brake? Or is it because they're very aggressive with their marketing? So you need to understand, TBM is out there, you know, providing brakes to people. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's great. But you, you, Carlos, Miguel, Steve, Billy, and, you know, Gary, you don't need TBMs on your street car. Okay, so maybe TBM doesn't eat, like he, hear me say that. TBMs belong on race cars. If you want to get a set of TBMs on your shit, you put it on your race car because you want lightweight brakes, you want really smooth stuff, and you want decent braking. Alejandro Flores is going to keep the Brambles on that bitch because it's a street car, meaning I have no interest in running bicycle brakes on a car that weighs 3,800 pounds, that I drive 5,000 miles a year, I'm not interested in that. I'd rather have OEM quality stuff, six pop Brembo's, and live a happy life. That thing stops really freaking good. What up, Alex says, Slippy Boy Films. I just got my LRX order for my 12 GT, and I can't wait to get it started with you guys. Maybe you'll get my ticket. I hope not. Um, who knows? And here's the S197 fun. Can't wait for content. Already dropped the video today. Going to drop another one tomorrow. I'm going to drop maybe another one about data logging Wednesday. And then we're going to do some performance stuff, put a tune in it really soon, maybe on Friday. So that means I have to order the N-Gage cable uh, today from, from the tuning place. And then I'll get a tune on it or I can use an RTD or I can use whatever. It doesn't matter. I'd rather use an N-Gage because I want to be able to monitor it and la data log on LiveLink. But I can do it with it with the laptop and um, and the RTD and do it that way too. Um the LRX, I don't have an LRX on me yet, so once that gets hammered out and everything gets, um, you know, the growing pains are over, then maybe I can give you some stuff because we're working on fixes, changes, you name it. Um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, once everything is, you know, hammered out and, and firmware has been updated and everyone is on the same page, I think then and only then should I start giving you tutorial videos because if I give you a video now and the firmware changes, then that video is useless. Do you expect to see some 24s blowing up on 93 with the 93 Whipple kit? Um, with, with the VMP 90, uh, Whipple kit? Not necessarily. Um, the car is new. And that's one thing that these new cars tend to do is they're they're kind of tolerant of what's, what's out there. So the Whipple kit is new. So 12 PSI, brand new rotating assembly. The car is generally happy. But let's say two years from now, you buy a used 24. It's 2026, robots are sucking your cock, um, you know, uh, uh, Biden is in, B Biden's skeleton is in its second term, and everything's going to shit, and you're like, well, let me get myself a 2024 Mustang now that they're a little cheaper, so that car has been through hell and back, and then you install the Whipple VMP kit in it, and it has 30,000 miles, that's when issues pop up, 30,000, 40,000, when it's being, you know, when it's everything's nice and loose. And now all of a sudden you're like, all right, let me put a VMP Whipple kit. I want to mimic what they do, you know, boom. And then your car is not as tolerant to the mods because it's, you know, it's seen some shit. And then all of a sudden you're going to start seeing issues. I guarantee catalytic converters will clog first and that will cause issues before the octane and boost stuff becomes an issue. At the end of the day, it's something you have to be leery of. My biggest concern with the Whipple Carbio kit and the and the and in the um, marketing of marketing that as a nine second kit is the catalytic converter. Y'all know what Whipple tuned OEM vehicles do with the Whipple supercharger when it comes to the catalytic converter, right? It's not like you guys don't know what's happening out there, right? Well, I'll just stick a high flow cat in it. Have you seen what that silica based high flow cat does with 10 PSI? It melts. So the high flow cat sucks. The OEM cat sucks. So are customers going to buy a GESI catalytic converter welded on their stock exhaust? A thousand horsepower flow capable cat. I don't even know how to determine that. How do you determine that? How do you determine a thousand horsepower catalytic converter? I don't know. 
So is that what you're gonna do? No, you're 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 relying on these companies to educate you on what's happening, and they're not telling you, and they would never tell you. By the way, I really wouldn't run a catalytic converter on this thing long term because it'll blow up and your engine goes to shit, right? And then because it's a carb EO kit, you will have a sealed catch can system pressurizing a 24 coyote crankcase with 12 psi and 93 octane then that blow by or the vent the, the pressurization goes up the valve cover back into the motor closed loop closed loop closed loop closed loop instead of exhausting that pressurization it's just going back in back in it's just doing this shit and then the catalytic converter goes fuck you boom ringland sasso man Sa do i have sasso i don't think i never got sasso and i thought i had sasso here but i don't have sasso oh i do have sasso i don't have sasso god damn it i wanted to have sasso in there but no sasso so yeah in my opinion um that's going to be the biggest issue the catalytic converter is going to be an issue before the octane and boost is going to be an issue my high flow cats with 500 miles with 10 psi started melting says Jasso 50. Hey Alex, what do you think about the GSI cats? Someone in the chat for the first time. G gut them, baby. High flow cats. Won't the S650 still have crank support issues on the Whipple? It's not that they have issues. It's when you are, it's when you are really stressing the car out that a crank support is a good idea. Now I don't know if the Gen 4 infrastructure is different down there where uh MFP has gotten a hold of one. Remember, they're in Australia. So they have to wait like a year or two until the 24 Mustangs end up over there. They just got 21 F-150s there. It's 2024. Okay, so they just got stuff down there. But I'm waiting for them to ship me the blue uh, crank support for the GT500. I'm going to run a crank support for my car. And I'm going to try to keep it as stock as possible. Stock appearing. Maybe go to the track with a drag pack. And then just bolt on the Brembo's again with a, a sticky rubber. And just ride out like that. Because I don't really want to make that car all racy. But I don't think the crank issue is going to affect something at 12 PSI. I think it will affect it if you slam the limiter. But obviously with the Whipple tuning, it's using soft limiters. It's not slamming limiters. Especially the auto version. So I, I think you'll be okay without anything. Robert Mapson, I don't know where you've been. Uh, he asks, why doesn't Lund support SCT devices anymore? What I would say is this. I would ask SCT. Because that's a great question and I would absolutely love to know the answer. Remember, and, and, and I don't want to poke the bear and that's the issue, right? You, there are certain things I want to mention and certain things I don't want to mention. That's one of them that I want to mention so fucking bad. But I have to be smart. Um... Let's just say SCT uh, wanted to just distance themselves from Lund in, let's say, 2020. And to their detriment, because what happened? Ford device sales tanked. It tanked. I, if you were to look at a graph of SCT Ford sales for X4s and live wires or whatever the fuck they got going on now, if there was a graph, and they were like, do, 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 everything's good, everything's good. And then, oh, oh my God, stuff happened. Let's stop supporting Lund. It went. And if you were HP tuners and you saw that happen, you saw. Right? So it was a story of two companies and two philosophies, in my opinion. SET was like, nah, we're good with Lund. <laughs> HP tuners was like, yeah, we'll fuck with Lund. And... HP Tuners has sold a ton of RTDs. We have over 4,400 uh, unique, unique, that means individual, uh, non-copied customers just on TDN, not counting people that use an RTD on their laptop. And SET, what's that smell? Sasso, man. So if, if SET wants to come back into the, into the Lund world, uh, unfortunately, now they have competition. Right, you have the LRX, which is killing it, killing it. Okay, um, it sinks, it auto sinks. Once we work out the kinks and bugs, it's gonna be phenomenal. Trust me, it's a touch screen. You can monitor gauges live. It 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 does crank relearns. It's a great device. SCT, you can see stuff live. You can do crank relearns, but now you're competing against HP tuners, RTDs, TDN network, and the LRX. Now. 
Alejandro Flores wants to have everyone in one big lund umbrella and say, you got an SCT device, here's a tune. You have an HP tuner device, here's a tune. You have an LRX, here's a tune. That is not up to me. That is not up to Lund. That's up to the companies to say, okay, we want to work together. What can we do? Well, number one, uh, you can apologize because <laughs> we did nothing wrong. Uh, and then just get back on, give us a killer deal. Like stupid margins. How much you sell SCTX4s for? Uh, uh, 450 bucks. Okay, our cost is 125. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, cool. LRX, TDN, uh, RTD. But carajo. Late, but how's the family, Alex? I wouldn't know. Crazy because they ditched their highest volume four tuners. Exactly. Alex, can we get a little bit of SCT story on Patreon if you can disclose some things? Unfortunately, JD Swag, not without. Uh, okay, there's industry stuff that happens in the background that, honestly, conversations, because this show doesn't matter. <laughs> like, this show does not matter at all. So much so that if it's said on this show, it it affects company sales. Imagine stuff I've said on this show and aired out, and there is a direct correlation with sales and what upper management hears and this and this and that. So I wonder if this show is that influential in the Ford market, then, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to get my flowers one day. But why do people act like it doesn't matter? Like, I'm okay if you're saying I suck and I whatever. But don't deny the fact that this show, I've built it, and with the Amory, us and the Amory, have built this show to be a juggernaut in the automotive aftermarket, specifically on the Ford side. So it's a good idea to be on my good side, right, Bendejo? Like, it's a really good fucking idea to like be like, all right, bro, like, what do you think we should do? Like, why don't people reach out to me because I have a finger on the pulse of what happens and say, what should we do? What do you think we should do? What is everyone else doing? No, they don't do that. It's almost like they do things and then wait for my reactions to see if it's positive or negative, as opposed to proactively saying, I want to work with you to promote a product or this and this and that. How can we do it? And then, you know, apparently the show doesn't matter that much. I love my ACT on my two valve. LOL Engage is the best though. American Muscle Company opinion. I mean, so because I like Justin Dugan, American Muscle really, and I know you guys are going to think I'm crazy. They turned a corner. Remember during the Bama times and I made fun of them and Justin Dugan said, rightfully so, we deserved some of that treatment. And it was typically around the time where they were promoting their Gen 2 Mustang running a number. And then I found out the Mustang had a Gen 1 control pack. And I said, wait a minute, then it's a Gen 1. If you have a Gen 2 S550 Mustang running a number and saying Bama tuning, Bama tuning tunes Gen 2 Mustangs, and then that Gen 2 Mustang had a Gen 1 control pack, I go, that's a Gen 1. You're lying. So we caught them doing that, or I caught them doing that, and I talked about it. But Justin Dugan, being the front person for American Muscle, is wonderful. Number one, he is legit. He can drive. He talks the talk. He walks the walk. And he is a perfect representative for that company, turn five, because you can relate to the guy. He's not talking out of his asshole. Most companies that talk about a product talk out of their asshole. They lie to you. And the good thing about Justin Dugan is he gives legitimacy to some of the stuff that we talk about on the show. He's like, this isn't going to give you any power, but it'll sound cool, right? You know, these cars make this much of pump gas, and he is on the money so american muscle had a turning point around the year that i worked at vmp when they had the uh the car shows and everything that we talked about with justin dugan on his interview and i think they've now you know centered themselves around being a aftermarket uh, parts company that mostly uh deals with aesthetics not necessarily hammering on the tuning because back then sct bama and everything it was like Strike while the fire is hot. Coyotes were hot. Everyone's running numbers. So everyone wanted to be the top dog in coyote shit. So they were, it was competitive to the point where they were kind of like stepping out of their comfort zone. And instead of being a parts company that sells louvers and tire, tire knockoffs, that they tried to talk tuning shit. And in, in, in I wasn't a tuner at the time. I said, nah, y'all, y'all bugging. Fuck all that. 
and they recognized it. They took a step back. Justin Dugan became the front person, and he, I think, gave legitimacy to the everyman way of talking and, and modifying their car, and, and I think they, they really did a good job. I gained a lot of respect for him after the interview. Justin Dugan's legit. I, I genuinely like the guy. Did you see VMP guy's wife didn't even kiss homeboy? <laughs> Can we leave that? Can we leave that stuff? I, <laughs> this is the problem. I know too much, so I need to absolutely not have that happen. Did you hear? Great. <laughs> oh fuck! So, look, I don't care. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, I'll leave that comment up there so people can read it. But I honestly don't care. Uh, yes, exactly. Look that. That name will never be mentioned on this chat ever again. That dude, that the, dude, the shit I found out, bro, dude, dead. No, don't even give a sucker any shine. Do not give a sucker any shine. Not sure if you covered this already, but in the opening, but do you recommend the the breather one with the one-way check valve on the valve cover? So I recommend, and again, you have to live with the fumes or if you're in an emission state, you have to have every, a closed loop system. But if your car is boosted, I want to ventilate that crankcase pressure ASAP. So I want two out into a common catch can or two individual catch cans open breathing to the atmosphere, venting to the atmosphere. I want to get rid of the crankcase pressure. I don't want to recirculate it and put it back into the combustion event. Do you know what I'm saying? Alex, where do you suggest going going to next? I'm an ex Cobro. Going to get to another Mustang, 30 to 50 range. Want to do street strip rowing gears, high eights, nines car. Sonic Blue, that sounds aggressive. A high eight second stick shift car is not something to sneeze at. That is like twin turbo or 30 PSI blower. Uh Coyote built motor. Built, built, dunce, it's crazy FFRE, built, built crazy stuff if it's boot if it's supercharged like a 3.8 whipple or a uh, vmp at 24 25 psi that's like a 10 percent and a 69 upper and uh the car should weigh 32 to 3300 pounds t56 one uh 266 first and maybe a slipper style clutch now there's a guy that has a twin turbo s197 up in the um fort myers tampa at bradenton area uh, on three kit twin turbo runs eights and is a street car but that car makes 1100 1200 so you got to configure it that way in my opinion if i was going to build a stick shift car meaning built motor da 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 gen one mustang right off the rip 13 or 14 built motor right off the rip t56 or ben calamer built uh mt82 right off stage three right off the rip fuel system it needs to make 1,100 wheel. It needs to have the Billy Badass rear end. It needs to have potentially a badass clutch or you you have to uh, be okay swapping the clutch at least twice a year depending on how often you race the car. It's no joke. It's it's Billy. I would do a Gen 1, not a Gen 2. Um, Motion Raceworks does sell good catch cans, so you can have just like a... Or um, Fat House. So Fat House luckily does sell a really not a Fat House... Fat house, fab. Because there's a performance and there's, there's a fabrication, right? Fat house fabrications. Uh, let's, because I, their shit looks nice. And I think we have one on the Grey Goose. Uh, oh, well, their website's fucking nice. But I just need, like, parts. There we go. Evo? The fuck? You guys still fucking with Evo stuff? Get away from that shit. So Mustang S197. Bam! Catch can kids. Shout out to them. So... A catch can kit, 349, um, you know, something that you can plumb. And I think this goes in place of the battery. Now, that's going to be a problem, right? You're going to smell that inside the car. There's just no doubt. If it goes by the battery, that's also where your HVAC sucks in air, right behind the battery, actually. So if you can maybe seal that. But um, if this does go where I think it goes, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong about that. Um, drain kit, yes, please. And... Uh, push line lock fitting, braided line fitting. Yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, let me see. Where does it go? There. Thank you. Fat House has good pictures. There you go. So right behind here on Coyotes, especially S197s, you have the HVAC system. This is where it sucks in air. Right behind it, there's like a little flap behind this. 
So if you have your CAT scan uh, venting there, you're going to smell it inside the car. But it'll ventilate properly. So in my opinion, this is super nice. But again, now you have to relocate your battery. So you could do this or you could do motion race work stuff. So um, if it's an S197, do that. If it's an S550, obviously they have a similar kit that, but it, it requires you to, you know, re relocate batteries and stuff. You mean 830 horsepower with a corrected STD smooth dynograph? That's another thing. The customer knows too much. It's 2024, March 3rd. The customer knows too much. So remember, um, spike gate with vmp remember spike gate so what is spike gate let's look it up um and this is the problem with with uh with, with the customer being really informed uh vmp 1000 horsepower track attack so Derek Barron, uh, it was, a, it was a, unless they got rid of the video, stock Gen 2, stock Gen 2 horsepower record. So it was a video back in the day when Joe used to work there. Joe does not work there anymore. Thank goodness. Um, uh, and let's see if they show the dynograph. So apparently it made a thousand, but if you listen to the run, and again, if you have headphones, headphone warning, there's an audible blip. Okay, so it goes boom at the top of the pole. And that skewed the reading. Crazy. That one was clean. He said it didn't blow up. <laughs> I love Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Joe after the pull. He goes, well, it didn't blow up. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Shit. It didn't blow up, so that's always cheap. <laughs> it didn't blow up, so that's always good. Oh. 11.40. 11.40? Wait a minute. So there, this is not the stock motor record. Stock Gen 2. F wow, well, why is it so choppy? I want to look. I want to find the video where they, um, where they, where they did a blip. And it pissed everyone off on the internet. No, 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 no. Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, so this is this is this is the issue right here. Blipgate, right? Everyone goes, oh, it made a thousand, and then somehow between sixty-five hundred <laughs> and seven thousand, it. It made a uh, hundred horse. <laughs> so every 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 uh, nine hundred to let's say every five hundred horse, uh, fifty five. It made actually it made about a hundred. But the, this crazy blip, everyone and look standard smoothing five. Okay, and again, this is no indictment on Joe or anything like that. But Blipgate was very well documented, and people were like, I don't know about that. So that people know too much. So they, they don't, they need to see a smooth graph. They need to see like everything. Like I'll give you an example. Okay. Check it out. Let's go to Facebook and let's go to Lund Racing and the Grey Goose made a pull. Uh, John Lund too. We made a pull on only like 40 PSI, nothing crazy. Okay. And where is the video? Uh, I think it's on Instagram. Yeah. Let's go to Instagram. Because I think it's on Instagram. Let's go to Lund Racing on Instagram. Uh, fuck, where's the search button? There we go. Lund Racing. Lund. Lund Racing. I'm telling you, Instagram online or on, on the computer is trash. Absolute trash. So check it out. This was um, Lund Racing on Instagram. The Grey Goose making a poll at 30 something PSI. Okay. I think he picked up the phone and walked over to the dyno. Boom. 1959, 1373. Look at the graph. 
low boost, high, you know, higher boost at 8190 RPMs. Max everything happened at 6930. No blip. Everything's super cool. So that, when people see that, they go, okay, now this was, I think, maybe a 38 or 40 something PSI pull. We have the ability to go to 55 plus. So that at least gives you a an understanding of like, okay, smooth. And even though hub dyno is kind of more show flywheel horsepower than, than rear wheel horsepower, it's a tuning tool. We're not looking to make records. We pour it on at the track. The dyno is not to just rag it out at the track. The dyno is uh, uh, rag it out on the dyno. We want to see up to the boost that we use at World Cup, then translate it to the track because now we're doing second gear leave on the 6R and we're using one shift. It's launching in second, and it does one shift. Now, people are going to look at the at the at the Grey Goose, and they're going to see something that might confuse them a little bit. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give too much away. But when you see how the Grey Goose sits, it's probably going to confuse you a little bit. You're going to go, wait a minute, I don't understand what kind of tire setup that is. But when you look at this car, the way it sits, it's kind of going to confuse you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So you're probably going, wait, I don't, I don't understand what I'm seeing. How is this car so beefy? How is this tire setup so stupid beefy? Um, so right now, this is how it sits. We have a radiator because it is a car that is wet deck. We do not run uh, methanol only. There is a slight mix. Turbos are mounted low. Fans. This is the uh, ice tank. This is the fuel tank. And there's catch cans, there's Zeus fasteners. It's going to have a uh, three or four piece front end, not a one piece front end. So it's going to be, you know, if anyone complains about that shit. And all that work only eliminated about 100 pounds from the car. But this, the way the car sits is going to confuse a lot of people. They're going to be like, what's going on? I don't get what's going on with those tires. They are beefy, but it is within the rules. That's so wild. I'm on 8.9 of my stock gen 1. 40 plus PSI must feel insane. Hey, Theo, glad you got the pick of the catch can. Hopefully it helps people decide to get a catch can or not. Did I hear it right? Only 40? It's amusing to see for how far shits come in general. That used to be considered insane amount. It's either 38 or 42. We can go up to 55. And if we want to kill it, it'll be 60. We just have that ability. But we haven't gone there yet. So it's a 6R80. So we got to get it to a track. Do, do a hit. Eighth mile. See if it's in the 440 range. And if it's like, okay, it's 440 with a 6R second gear leave, 1060 foot at 42 PSI. That's what it went 202 um, with. It went 202 in the quarter with, I think, 42 PSI. And I think it went 206 or 209 with like 45 PSI. So Junior has guesstimates. He's a math guy. So he has guesstimates as well. It'll make for per boost. And it's serious, and I don't want to give any of that away. I just want to see if it translates to the track. Got to think, while 80% of Lund's clients may be the average Joe, you still got 20% who have been building and racing for years. Those are the ones who know when something seems funny. Wide rims, stretch tires, not a 315. It's not a 315. It's an amazing machine. Second heaviest car in the class at MI, MIR Hall Tech Finals. I got a new PR catch can with the check valve like you had on the black car for TVS, but there's no vent. Is that an issue? If it's boosted... I prefer it's vented to atmosphere, but this is just this channel's opinion. I wouldn't say you're going to have an issue at 10 PSI, but I had an issue at 10 PSI with my white car. I didn't blame the catch can, but I suspect having a closed loop system constantly keep pressure in the crankcase did not help the Ringland survive the test. So Indiana Jones found Octanium in the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Would be cool to see the Grey Goose versus Brian Luna's Blue Bean. Looks like he did some stuff too, courtesy of Aldo. Yes, we tuned that car. <laughs> I think people forget what cars we tune. We tune we tune that car. So Aldo did a bunch of work. That car I think is gonna live in the more comfortably because super ragged out, it was a six second car. But I think it'll live in the high sixes more comfortably as long as long as the crank as long as the crank case is not pressurized and as long as the cooling coolant system is not pressurized so i hope brian luna and aldo have fuel rail pressure sensors in the car crank case pressure sensors in the car coolant pressure sensors in the car and if you don't 
you are you are crazy. You're crazy. I love you. I love you guys. You guys build badass stuff. High level shit requires a ton of data. So the following things need to be on that car. According to this channel, that doesn't matter. Coolant pressure sensor, crankcase pressure, fuel rail pressure has to happen. Has to happen. That looks like a stretch 28105, but maybe I'm crazy. You are crazy. Uh, I'm excited to see progress on your Gen 1, especially since you go once you go boost. My stock Gen 1 has been 536, 6130 so far. Hopefully, get to the track and crack off a 9 soon. No problem. If you're in the 530s, 60130, that's a deep 9 second car. I wrap a sweatband around my filter on the catch can, helps keep the smell down a lot, in my opinion. Uh, Nitro says, I'm building a Gen 1 from an F 150 from my Marauder. I'm stoked. Running Hoosiers now? No, those are not Hoosiers. Those are Mickey Thompson ET Street R's. Alex needs his own line of catch cans. Between Junior and Senior, are wither of them itching to get the Turbo 400 or are they riding high on the 6 slide? If it was up to Junior, he'd never even fuck with the 400. He just, for whatever reason, wants to ride it on the 6R80. Now, I don't blame him. Because nothing has shown us that if it's operating properly, that it can't take the abuse. We think the 6R80 is the future overdrive version of the 400. So if you want to do overdrive class racing, I think the 6R80 is God tier transmission. Only though, if it's built by power by the hour with a 4R200 hub. Keep six gear for your overdrive qualifications if you want to do overdrive classes and only if it's tuned by Lund Racing. Plain and simple. That's how I look at it. And if you don't look at it that way, vaya con Dios. I wonder if you really start seeing pinholes when you're racing a car as fast as the Grey Goose. What PSI is good crankcase pressure? I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> that, <laughs> look at the name. <laughs> oh, that, that, I don't, no, I'm not even going to go there. I ordered a Luntu with the new LRX this week. Look forward to seeing what it's all about. Thanks again for the knowledge and the news in the Coyote game. Why did BT Catch Cans come soon? Mo move over pedal extender. Whoa, I definitely didn't see that coming. What size, I wonder. Ooh, wee. Could you imagine ET Street R's? They've been sixes. Guys, ET Street R's have been sixes. Okay. Um, there's a car, a Nova. That that guy that that what's his name? Um, real good at doing stuff. He tunes a Nova with a big boy ET Street R. It's been like threes in the eighth, which is like low six high fives in the quarter. Hey Alex, what would you ben what would, what would the benefit of a good catch can breather kit versus just installing a breather filter? Oh no, not not much. Honestly, um, you're just basically keeping all of the fumes away from the engine bay. Now this is the problem, um. Tony the truck guy. Let's say you have breathers right on your on your cam covers. Let me hide the chat. Let's say you have the breathers right on the cover. F oil pressure eventually is going to cause oil to come out of the breather at the catch can. So you're going to have a mess at your coil cover. And it's going to bleed down into the header and it's going to smoke. And in the event of something really fucked up happening, let's say, for instance, your ship blows up. And, and it pukes oil from there onto the header. Now you're on fucking fire, bro. So I would prefer you have lines, push lock situations, and then remotely put the catch can away from anything that's volatile like the header, engine bay, reciprocating things, belts. I would prefer you run and route lines away from the engine bay. I don't want breathers on top of a cam cover coil cover, valve cover, and have high oil pressure, potentially uh, have mist coming out of those filters and end up in the header or in the event of an engine failure, shit goes on your headers and you catch on fire. Uh, Alex, I'm not trying to question you, big fan. I don't understand the hate on the S650.
What's good about the S650? And you did not run an 11.6 stock. You're fucking lying. You gutted it. Right? You gutted it, right? Don't tell me you ran 11.6 in an S650. Full weight. No fucking way. You are lying. When every other S650 on the planet has been a 12.8, 12.6, 12.7. Yours somehow is a second quicker. It is a Gen 3 Mustang. It makes the same horsepower as a Gen 3 Mustang. Maybe a, a supposed 20 more. The resonator deleter, the resonator supposedly plugs up the exhaust. We have an MBRP resonator deleter. No way on planet Earth did you go 11.6 bone stock on pump gas you're lying you're just lying whatever i had the 6 already record says john lunn hey john what's up brother i did this show on sunday night because a lot of people a lot more people are here for it some people are at church <laughs> in the morning get out of here tony get out of here tony just like nudges his way in who does he think he is i have the upr dual catch can on my vortex car s650 can be tuned by lunn and it phones home end of discussion he's like i'm not trying to I don't understand the hate with the S650. It's slower. Oh, you're, oh, okay. Gotcha. You're 100% lying. Every other S650 on the planet fails to get out of the 12s, but yours, bone stock. But yours somehow is a second quicker. Get the fuck out of my life. I'm just sick and tired of people like that. I don't understand the hate. It's not tunable. It's not quicker than the Gen 3. It's slightly heavier. It has a more plugged up exhaust, and it has more things in it to potentially uh snitch on you for tampering with emissions why would i love that car tell me why would i love that car and before you say well, uh, at least they're still making v8s shut the fuck up the only people you're, you're parroting motor trend you're parroting american muscle you're parroting people that need to sell parts you're not you're not in the performance world because imagine there is a car right here that has the same motor, same transmission, weighs about the same, and it's tunable, and I can go sevens if I put the right parts in it, and then the next year, with a slight different nose and tablets on the dash, I can't fucking touch that car at all, except put a Whipple kit on it at 12 PSI, octane booster, and run nines in negative 400 DA with a 110 pound jockey. Please shut up. Like, please, this, this, is, this ain't that show. This, ain't, this isn't the parking lot at your meet, right? This is highly advanced. The parking lot at the meet says some dumb shit like, the gray mare's motor, I want to build a 331 because the gray mare has a 331. That's what I've heard at meets. When I started going to meets and people were like, you know why I want to build a 331? Because the gray mare has a 331. They're stupid people. They're just stupid people at meets. Draggy Verifier, did you do it at the dash recorder with the Mustang has? Oh, now dude said his homeboy ran the 11.6. It's getting deep in here. He went to the track that went downhill, and it's got that time. Why buy an S650 when you can buy an S197? If you really like the S650 style, just put an S650 bumper on a Gen 3. It's weird. I never get oil in my cash can, and I all I ever get is the 85 vapor juice. But when I swapped to the CJ from the 350 intake manifold, I had oil in the 350 intake. So that cash can was not working properly. What it was doing, it was, so, okay. So a catch can, okay, yeah, okay. So a catch can has a line going in, line going out back into the manifold. If that line is just going straight through, meaning if it's too close, like, like you literally look at the fittings and they're, it's just going to go straight through. You have to have something that maybe goes, uh, comes in at midway point. And then comes out higher so that it falls down and then the outlet goes to back to the motor. But if you have a line at the top and a line at the top, in, out, it's just going to go straight through. So you need to have an offset of the lines of the catch cans so that the catch can can actually get some shit. That catch can that you had was probably designed by a fucking moron. Alex, please listen. I was probably here firster. <laughs> okay, Jacob Mitchell. 
Alex, please listen. I was probably here firster than half of these people. Really, I'm a fan. Please hear, H-E-R-E, me out. I'm the biggest Mustang fan. I had two Gen 3s. I never ran better than this car. Hear me out. I don't have to hear you out. Listen to me, Jacob. If everyone says zero ones make 580 wheel and i grab one and put it on a dyno and go i'm i'm the owner of a factory freak 620 rear wheel horsepower zr1 what's everyone gonna say in the zr1 world bullshit bullshit so this guy's just trolling there's no way because if the sampling size is massive and those cars can barely get out of the 12s and one magically runs 11.6, that's the anomaly. Maybe it was built on Wednesday. Factory freak! You know, I got one of the ones that they put a 350 motor. I got one that has a Predator motor in it. Shut up. I'm here first, sir. God damn it. Absolutely has to be trolling. Has to be. Until a stock S50 can be tuned, it'll be token forgotten soon. It'll be the token forgotten son. The Gen 2 and Gen 3 Coyotes are the real horses in the stable, and boosted us boosted one sits on top. So my JLT cash can is trash, damn it, but it does collect oil. Jacob is that G, is on that good stuff. He typed nervously. Uh, Firster, Prance, video or it didn't happen. I got to find the video. I got to find the um, stream deck. Let me see. Oh, it doesn't let me open it. Oh, it does. Wait, how come... That's crazy. It doesn't, it, it it allows me, can I do it here? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. <laughs> you guys know that sound clip. If you know what this sound clip is from, we can be friends. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. <laughs> Tristan Jackson says, Alex, hear me out. S650 is king. <laughs> no, I'm a fan. No, I'm saying I'm the fastest car there. Three other guys that ran my time. I can show you videos. I can show you draggies. Draggies? Draggies. You're talking about draggy? Do me a favor. Get the fuck out of my face. Hey, guys. Put a one in the chat if you want I'm gone. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm not here for the bullshit. If I started popping off that ZR1 ones a king, that, that my ZR1 makes 60 more horse than all the others, the ZR1 world would be on fire. Like, absolutely on fire. Jacob, tuned by a potato, dream car, S650 equals three level, three valve levels of cool. Do you plan to get the Ford Performance catch can? No. Are we naming the SU? No. Okay. So, uh, we're 903. So someone says one. Okay. Hey, hey, you got to go, man. I'm one of those guys that, um, where is it? Oh, wow. It's weird. Like, it doesn't open the, uh, get get him the fuck out of there uh, tab. Jacob Mitchell. Let, 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 let's get rid of Jacob Mitchell. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Can somebody... Can somebody like uh can can an admin can an admin put him online or just just get him out of there? <laughs> Cause I can't for some reason. Like for some reason I click his name. Actually I click anyone's name, it doesn't do shit. Interesting. Yeah, I wish I wish I could just let me see if I if I open the page really big. Jacob Mitchell. No, it doesn't let me get rid of him. Holy shit, it's crazy. So yeah, it's, one of my admins has to get rid of him. Put him in timeout for 30 minutes just to shut him the fuck up. Hear me out, Alex. I'm a big fan. No, you're not. If you were a fan, you'd be a paying member. Even John gave him the boot. Exactly. John. Even John Lund. John Lund says, get him the fuck out of here. So if you have an admin on JD Swag or whatever, get him the fuck out of here. Fuck all that guy. Um, damn, even John Lund said, get the fuck out. John Lund said, so it has to be. Um, Alex, should I race an A10 S650 at work? They're telling everyone they can gap my 6R80 Lund 85 tune FFR Holly Haram P Mass 315 for 1,000. Don't run them for 1,000. Don't run anyone for money. It's stupid. Okay? If you're going to run them... Um, Get sticky rubber and ride out. Your car should be an 11, 11, at those mods, your 6R80 Lundy 85, uh, tuned, Holly High Ram, 315 gears. Shit, my car only went 11, my car only went 11, 9 with those mods. So on the street, if you spin a little bit, it's Sasso. So I know I would not race it because you're probably both running similar times. Um, just had a 30 second ad for Manscaped. Thanks for that. You got it, brother. I don't understand why you guys just don't pay. If you don't want to see ads, just pay. Become, become a premium. You, you guys don't watch YouTube enough to give it 11 or 12 bucks when you can go out and get, you know, uh, dip 
uh, three energy drinks a day and four coffees? Come on. At least I'm not as stupid as Jacob says Smash and Devour. He has a one right after he posted. P. Diddy talking gay shit on podcast. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Yeah. So let's talk about that real quick. I am never giving Flow Racing a dime of my money. Flow Racing has got to be the worst coverage that you're paying 120 bucks for a year. I have ever seen in my life get it together the world series of pro mod was something i was looking forward to and the coverage is so ass it's such shit that whoever is in charge at flow racing needs to get your head out of your fucking ass or just stop broadcasting i've seen better streams from some kid with a camera live streaming from bradenton then from Flow Racing, not only are the microphone levels garbage, not only are the camera views garbage, but the stream cuts in and out. And the announcers think that they're the center of the show. No, you're not. Just let the racing happen. I am canceling my subscription. I think it re-ups right before Texas 2K, so I got to go online and make sure I put a stop payment on that. Fuck. Fuck Flow Racing. It is absolute trash. Um, hear me out. What's up with um? What's up with that shoddy by the door? I don't know what you're talking about. The A10 will be first. Or VMP is making a lot of noise. If that dude blue likes it, then it's legit. <laughs> Nothing like a 40 pound, 49 pound anchor and an NA build. Is it better to build a 680 680E or a swap a Turbo 400 for a 700 horsepower boosted setup? <clears throat> I don't know shit about the 680E, so I can't tell you shit about that. The guy probably the guy probably got a sneak peek of the, a shot on it and grass roof coyote. Uh, anybody that says factory freak licks their boys boyfriend's toes. Wow. P Diddy about to be receiving the gay shift position. Man, you doing it, man? You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. I think the VMP bear could get a better video than the flow racing. Oh no, the VMP bear. I need some kind of emoji of. A <laughs> Yo, man, like I was driving. And I was like, oh shit, a bear. <laughs> Bro, like the four people that know that story, I lost my freaking mind. Yo, so like what was happening was I was driving, right? And I was like, oh shit, a bear. And I'm like, a bear in Orlando? Like when was the last time you guys saw a bear? Like a random bear on the street doing street shit. In Orlando or anywhere up there, I haven't even seen a fucking deer in uh in Florida. But the, yo man, it's driving is chilling. Oh shit, a bear, son! Poop, scoop, <laughs> and shit went downhill. So I wonder how other large Whipple dealers feel about the VMP Whipple unit. Damn, Lund, Mister Mister John Lund, you're you're getting spicy. You're saying some spicy shit. But I agree. Imagine you're lethal or queef and you see them being relevant again on a product that they were at war with. They were at war. There was a war. VMP versus TV, TBS versus this. Da, da, da. And now Whipple, you know, absorbed them. Let's be honest. And now people like Lethal must be like, wait, why the fuck are you giving them a lid? Why the fuck you didn't give me a lid? Whose dick do I got to suck to get a lid design? What the fuck? So I don't think Whipple cares. Whipple's like, we're the only game in town when it comes to positive displacement superchargers in late model coyote stuff. It's crazy stuff. Um, ST Performer says, Flow's Dragon asphalt coverage leaves a lot to be desired, but they're good top for top. They're good on top tier dirt. Who the fuck watches that shit? <laughs> Dirt. Uh, does it make them less relevant? I don't know. Oh my god, you should name the new car after my close. <laughs> I'm gonna just leave that alone. Less relevant as the 24 GT. See, so John Lund agrees that the 24 GT, in terms of relevance in the tuning space, is it's just not relevant. It's just not a relevant car. The relevance is low in the tuning space. So a lot of people go, why do you hate on it? I'm a, I'm a tuner. 
Why do you hate on a car that you can't tune? Excuse me? What good is it if I can't offer the customer the ability to adjust that car and modify it the way they want to modify it? Ford made it difficult. Now, unfortunately, and I told you guys this three years ago. You remember I was talking all this shit three years ago? <laughs> <laughs> so three years ago i was saying gone are the days of a nice little device you get it in the mail you put it in your car you go boop 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 load tune saves the stock upload the tune bada bing bada boom saca el party i want to go 85 pay for the 85 boom bada boom bada bing everything was awesome and i said there will come a day where you will look back at this era and go, God damn it, we were absolutely spoiled in the N-Gage, SET, whatever era. Now, in order to flash your car, what do you have to do? You have to tuck your dick between your legs, stuff it in your asshole, send your computer out, bring it in, get a, get a device that has 17 wires. You simultaneously put one in your ear, your mouth, and your asshole. And then you plug it to your battery with a charger. And then the car's got to be running. And then you have to hit control out delete Guys. The tuning game, as we know it, or as we knew it back in the, you know, 11 through 20, uh, 23, actually 2020, to me, that was the top. Once 21 started coming around, everything kind of went downhill. Banks Power has a solid series in Whipple versus TVS. Michael Locke says, I see David Head Games is now porting Gen 3 Heads. He's good. Whipple won the Blower Wars, just like Taco Bell won the Fast Food Wars. All restaurants are now Taco Bell. All blowers are now Whipple. Bro, I'm in Sanford, not too far from VMP. I live in an RE park. There's hella bears around here. If I accidentally leave food outside, they take that shit. I'm right next to a black bear reserve. I didn't know that. Lund has no brakes, just beta reverse prop. Lund has no brakes, just beta and reverse prop. Don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Um... I think bear is a rainbow term for fire, masculine dude that doesn't look fire. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. <laughs> I'll never get rid of my engage. I love it. Sit on the shifter and load tune. Dude, stop it. <laughs> that, that name is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, fuck me. What's up, Nickel White? South Park Gyro Cycle. Mustang. Stop. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> okay. I must admit, that was the worst part about. Okay. So, when I worked for VMP, I never stayed in a hotel that had a lobby. <laughs> the hotel, motels that I stayed in, when you open your door, you're outside. You're literally outside. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. And we stayed at like the shadiest shit ever. The moment I got with Lund and we went on our first uh, road trip, fucking, you know, nice, beautiful, like a really nice, I don't, I don't know what a good hotel is anymore, but it was like super nice. And I was like, oh, wait, when you open the door to your hotel, when you work for Lund, you're still inside a building? Yes. Uh, ST Performer says, better get a timing line and learn how to change jets. If you like playing with our cars, we had it so good. We did. Playing with your cards. That's what I did today, SVD Performance. I was dialing in the spark uh, on the uh, uh, Mustang. I brought it down to 25 degrees. I'm going to go fill up with Sunoco 260 GT. The nitrous kit is in, and it started to rain. And I couldn't get a hit on the um, on the notch. Did you lift the Caltech KSC before you got that one? Yeah, of course. Kidding me? You're, you're, you're comparing a Caltech KSC for a Beretta 1301? Bro, do your research. Um, Lifestyle 2.0 says LRX is getting close. As soon as you can view logs yourself, it'll be just as good as the N-Gage, only easier to use. Seniors getting so many phone calls tomorrow. So I wonder if Whipple, John Lund says, are you are you having an old-fashioned? So I wonder if Whipple, which is using a Ford Calibrator, not a Whipple employee, to tune, has full Ford access to CARB EO certified custom tuning in 2024. Is that Legal. Senior dropping bombs here. So I wonder if Whipple, which is using a Ford Calibrator, not a Whipple employee, to tune, has full Ford access to Carbio certified, is custom tuning in 2024. Is that legal? That is an excellent question. 
So let's do. Do, do we want to dive into that, senior? Or do we want to leave, leave that alone? Because obviously, you know, we can leave some stuff alone. But I love to speculate. I, okay, let's say I'm speculating. 100% speculation. I have no inside knowledge of anything. How is it possible that a guy that works for Ford that had acts that has access to the Ford calibration is now changing that calibration in order to allow a Whipple supercharger to be put on a car that has a locked computer. So let's 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 decompile that. What makes a Whipple kit carb EO certified? The hard parts? Like tell me what's in the case, the lines, everything that makes it carb EO certified. Or did you take it to SEMA? You did the bleep bleed back tests, you did the shut off and the cold air, da 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 da. But the tune is what makes it carb EO legal. And, and, and I, thank you very much. I appreciate that, John Lund. And I'm just speculating. So let's say Alejandro Flores has access to the Ford tune. And then I manipulate, let's say, a Paxton supercharger with the proper parts to make it carb EO certified is now because I have access to the Ford tune work for Ford, but do outside contracting for Paxton. Does then do they then piggyback off of my carb EO cert tune to that car? What makes the Whipple kit carb EO certified the tune or the hard parts? That is an excellent question senior and i think the problem with getting an answer to that question will will open up i want to say the the hypocrisy of the carb eo certifying process fuck california california should have a say in what happens in texas florida massachusetts anywhere else but for whatever reason they have adopted carb standards under a theory, not hard science. It's everything is theoretical. Everything is always up for scrutiny. Newton thought what must come, what comes up must come down until uh, Einstein came around and said, no, no, it works like this. So it's always evolving. Science, there is no proven science anything because now they're questioning the age of the universe now that the James Webb telescope is taking sampling light and they're like i don't know it looks different than we thought what it was you know so what is making the whipple kit carb EO? it looks like a blower with lines on it i look at a gen 5 whipple and a gen 6 whipple and a gen 2 whipple and a gen 3 whipple and i go what's the difference the tune there is nothing there that makes me go, oh, what makes this carb EO kit is this technology. It's an outside contractor having access to Ford stuff, piggybacking off of that and being and saying, here you go. The carb EO comes from Ford to me to you. It's weird. It's weird. So we're just asking, and again, I'm speculating. And this show doesn't matter. So it should not It should not be uh, um, <clears throat> controversial. Tell me what is making that CARB EO certified. John Lund says, I mean, people have paid a lot of money to SEMA Garage to have EO CARB ball blessings. CARB EO certifying is selling is woke, W-O-K, like a walk, like where you make a stir fry. Is that what you meant? <laughs> According to CARB, says Justin, if the part modification is shown to not increase vehicle emissions, it is granted an executive order. So it probably stays under whatever limits there are. But what is the scrutiny and process behind that? So a Roush kit, it's CARB EO, right? A Roush kit is CARB EO. So let's say, okay, a Whipple kit is CARB EO. 
But then when Alejandro Flores tunes the Whipple kit, it is now not Carbio. Let's say the kit does not change in terms of mechanical configuration from when it arrived on the vehicle versus when I tuned it. And then I manipulate torque tables and I give it a little bit more spark. And then I, I you know, uh, 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 change the watt lambda. What in that calibration, which are numbers that are already there, the numbers are already populated in the calibration. All I'm doing is manipulating them. You're telling me if I manipulate a number from 3 to 4, from 21 to 23, from 0.79 to 0 0.80, now negates the carb EO status of that kit? You are, you are smoking crack if you are making that leap that a tuner with a kit that's already Carbio can, by tuning it, make it not legal. Let, let, critical thinking is one of the better things that happens on this program. And if something doesn't make sense and, it's, and if, it, if, it, if it smells like shit, we got to call it out. And in my opinion, Lund, any other tuner, if the kit is certified, a tune should not be able to manipulate anything so adversely that it now makes it not carbiel. Come on, stop it. Stop it. California is really feeling the wrath of global warming with all the snow right now. No influence. Super Snake program is about what, what got Whipple access. Liberal logic, climate justice, dropping a like on country people tomorrow. 29 months of membership. Is a VMP coming with a VMP tune or a Whipple tune? Whipple tune. Um, who do they know? In the government. So you're telling me that I won't get a 999 tune if I buy a 24 Mustang with a Whipple? Um, money is what is used to pay off the beast. Ooh, I love you, John. John. John, you're getting spicy. I love you. But what if you increase the efficiency and reduce the emissions with the tuning? Right. Let's say cruising Lambda in on the Ford tune is 1.0. And I go, oh, let me make it 1.01. Like the tiniest in increase on the planet. 1.02. Uh, chilling. I have now given you 0 0.002 miles per gallon. I have now made, you know, the car emit less stuff. You know, like, what What did I change? And, and, and I, I didn't change anything mechanically. It's crazy. One cruise ship rang year-round and one private jet year-round is more emissions than every race car and sports car on the planet, full stop. Carbio, stamp by EP, owner, tuner, carb, cash, same people that voted for Biden. If Alice becomes carbon neutral by giving, by buying an EV, then he will get a carb cert. I don't think there's any other place you can get actual insight and educated opinions on how car modifying game works. I mean, my forklift is EV. Shouldn't I get credits? And I'm telling you, I the only reason I went into this, to be honest, is John Sr. went into it. And that's what you guys don't hear in the background. He made it public, so I'm, I can piggyback off of it. I don't talk about this stuff because I have so many questions of the process that if I was to talk about it, he would get a call. You and I both know, if I start going, what makes that carb EO if it's just a different tune? Meaning what makes it not carb legal if it went from a Ford tune to a Lund tune or you name your favorite tuner here? If the parts are identical and the same nothing but i don't mention that because i don't want to get you know uh lund in trouble or anything like that but he's asking really good questions and they have to be answered because you and i both know a car is boosting is boosting emissions legal let me look it up boosting double shot Ten dollars a can. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Convenient, quick access, poor quality feels needed. Da 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 da. Boosting double shot. Da, da da da. Description. Designed for two to three full numbers. Ideal solution for poor quality fuel. Unlock lost power. Small engine compatible. Street legal. Street legal. Can be used with low compression engines. Motorcycle friendly. Convenient. I don't know what the fuck it means. It doesn't say anything about like totally. Does not touch emission stuff because remember, the fuel in your at the, at the gas station is heavily scrutinized, right? They have 10% ethanol. They have, um, they have to meet certain standards. They're tested often. So I wonder if that kit going 9.99 was under 
all of kosher carb eel stuff. And Whipple will say yes. VMP will say yes. Okay, then open up the tuning to Lund. Because the carb the carb stuff doesn't go away if a tune changes. It's insanely hypocritical. What is amazing is the millisecond of the twenty the millisecond the twenty twenty four is tunable. None of Whipple's first efforts will be noticed because just about everyone with a blower at that point will be tossing in the Ed Badillo file. Ed Badillo file. Because just about everyone with a blower at that point is tossing the Ed Badillo file. He's right. He's right. So all of this effort to get a kit Carb EO certified, what is the first thing you do as a owner of a Whipple kit? You get a different tune on it because the advantages from going from a Whipple tune to a Lund tune is astronomical. Just the transmission tuning alone, you can gain like two or three tenths. And the cars idle better, drive better. Have you driven a Whipple tuned pre-24 car? Have you seen what the FP700 F150 is running? And the moment an aftermarket tune and a little bit more boost goes in there, it magically wakes up. JD Bruce says, what price do you think it will take to gain access since we know it's all going to be pay to play? It's not, it's not just about money. In my opinion is you have to kiss the ring. You have to kiss the ring. By the letter of the law, says FTT Performance, a screwdriver is a defeat device and it's all up to lawfare. Exactly. It's what, what they're willing to enforce. It's not what's legal or what not legal. And he's right. A screwdriver theoretically is a defeat device because with tools, you can defeat emissions. But the easy, low-hanging fruit is software companies, tuners, because we go by volume. So the EPA does a calculation, in my opinion, and the people that kiss EPA's ring can suck my cock. They say, okay, Alex Flores installs a catch can on seven 23 and up Mustangs. That's a fine of, I don't know, it's weird. It's so low... But hey, that company has done 400 DPF deletes and they have rev they have grossed 3 million in revenue last year. Who are the both technically broke the law. Who do you think they're going to go after? Alejandro with a screwdriver take putting catch cans on or a DPF delete company that tunes trucks and earns millions of dollars and what do they say? Pay a fine, stay in business. If you were righteous and you were about making sure that uh, people aren't breaking laws, you would say, you're shut down, you're out of business, you can't do shit. But no, the moment you levy a fine against them, it tells everyone it's all about the fucking money. Great conversation. It's not Ed's fault. He gets paid to do a job. Exactly. Ed Bedillo is not, Ed Bedillo is not the culprit here. It's the process. The process of this EPA and CARBEO certification is the culprit. And we can see, we can poke holes in it all we want. I don't really mention it because I didn't know if it was kosher to do it. But hey, the boss man said on the tuning front, this is what I think. And I'm going to piggyback off of that and support what he's talking about. Because we all think the same thing. Only this channel is willing to talk about it publicly. Everybody else hides behind shit. All these guys that talk that shit, that they're the best Ford tuner, all you motherfuckers hide behind shit and hope that you're hiding behind a tree and you don't catch shrapnel from EPA and other bullshit while people like us and Lund and others are trying to poke holes and meet the issue head on for the customer. All right, guys. Great show. Today, we talked about catch can stuff. We talked about why it's important to have a catch can, what type of catch can you should have when your car is boosted, and uh, the benefits of having it vent to atmosphere when you are making big boy power. And then we ended it talking legit stuff about poking holes in the carb EO process and what makes a carb legal kit, the hardware or the tuning. Because if it's the hardware, then the tunes should not be scrutinized if the hardware stays the same. All right, guys. Uh, someone said, wow, somebody just used a name I dislike. 
Okay, I don't know what's happening here. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Prime time seems to work for me. So next peasant chat next Sunday will be at 8 o'clock. Let's do that. We had about 600 people on today. That's what I want to do so that you guys don't have to wake up in the morning. And I don't really have, I don't bring the energy hardcore in the morning peasant chats. So have a good rest of your night. Watch the video talking about the 2013 Mustang project. Support, like, subscribe, share all that stuff so that I can get paid and I can put more parts in it because that's how it works. I'm doing this to get you guys content so I can get paid so then I can throw it back into the car and get you more content on it. Have a good rest of your night. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for Talking Shit. See ya.